Uh, my calculator's right here. OK. So ladies and gentlemen, um, what we're given is carbon dating. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about carbon dating. But you know, as, um, as something you know, in the fossils, all right. Um, the carbon dating, what they talk about is the amount of carbon that's going to be in a fossil um, through time. And what this is, the amount of carbon is going to decrease at a certain model. And the model for carbon dating is r equals 1 over 10 to the 12th times e to the negative t divided by 8,267. All right. So that's for a ratio for uh, what they call the carbon 14 um, to carbon 12. And it's really just measuring how much carbon is going to be less than the fossils. And when they are able to determine how much carbon is in the fossils, that allows us to determine how old something is, right? You know, you guys always hear, oh, these dinosaur bones. And they say, oh, this was in this period. They're able to do that by using carbon dating, all right? And by looking at how much carbon um, is left in the fossils or any other figure. So what they're saying is we have a fossil. They found one. They found a fossil. And the ratio of that carbon fossil is r equals 1 over 10 to, the, um, 10 to the third power. And what they want us to do is estimate the age of the fossil. Therefore, we need to figure out what t is going to be. All right. So what we're going to do is, since we know r is 10 over 3, we're going to, rep, we're going to put r, or we're going to put 10 to the third power in for r, equals 1 over 10 to the 12th times e to the negative t divided by 8,267. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we need to do is we need to solve for this t. So to do that, what we need to um, so to do that, what we need to do is we need to get um, these off the bottom, right? We need to get rid of this, rid of this. So to do that, let's uh, get 10 to the 12. How, if I multiply each side by 10 over 12. Well, 10 over 12 divided by 10 over 12, that's just going to go to 1. 10 over 12 um, divided by 10 to the third. Remember what happens when you have exponent, when you divide? What happens when you have variables with exponents? What do you do with the exponents? You subtract them, right? So that's going to be x to the 5 minus 3. So therefore, this one, 12 minus 3 would be 10 to the ninth power equals e times negative t divided by 8. 1,267. Did I actually use that right model? Um, 10 to the 12. Oh, shoot. No, I'm sorry. That's 13. No wonder. I, I knew I had something wrong. Sorry, it's not 10 to the 3. It's 10 to the 12. That's to the 13th power. Sorry. So that's to the 13th power. All right. So my apologies. We're not going to want to multiply by 10, 10 to the 12th. Let's multiply each side by 10 to the 13th power. Because what happens 10 over 13 times 10 over 13 is 1. So therefore, my apologies, we'll have, um, so in this case, we're going to have uh, 1 equals 10, right, times e to the negative t divided by 8,267. Then to get rid of the 10, I'll divide by 10. So I have 1 10 equals e to the negative t divided by 8,267. Yes? Okay. Where did I lose that? Well, all I did was I had this is a 13, not a 3. So that was a 13, not a 3. Yeah, I mean, I can, you can multiply by 12. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. 12 might not even been a bad thing. Watch. Multiply by 10 over 12. It's not going to change the problem. If you multiply by 10 over 12, what happens? 10 over 12 divided by 10 over 12 goes to what? 1. 10 over 12 divided by 10 over 13 goes to what? 1 over 10. 
So it doesn't matter how you know, do it. I just change it to a different way. But you still multiply by 10 over 12 on both sides. You're going to get 1 over 10. So it probably would have been easier not to change it. And you're still going to get this answer. Because what is 10 over 12 divided by 10 over 13? That's equal to 10, 12 minus 13, which equals 10 to the negative first, which is 1 over 10. Right? The main important thing what we're trying to do is we need to isolate this e. So we need to get rid of this 1 over 10 to the 12. How do you get rid of 10 over 12? Multiply it by 10 over 12. Okay. So and I probably just should have multiplied by 10 over 12. I don't know why I changed it to 13, why I multiplied by 10 over 13. It didn't change the problem. But um, it just added actually an extra step. So it probably would have been easiest just to keep 10 over 12 on both, on both sides. But now you guys can see I have this isolated. Does everybody see how I have this isolated? All right. So now we've isolated our exponential function. That's good. Now, in your homework last night, we talked about how to solve when we have this in an exponential. Does anybody know, Fisher, do you remember what you're supposed to do from here? What can we solve from here? You can convert it to logarithmic form. Shall we do remember another method? OK. The other method you could also do is take the ln of both sides. Why would taking the ln of both sides? Because remember, our rules of exponents state log base 3 of 3 equals 1. Log base 3 of 3 to the x equals x. You guys remember those properties of logarithms? No, OK. ln of e equals 1, because that's base e. Remember, ln is base e. So ln base e over to the x is just going to equal x. So ladies and gentlemen, if I take the ln of both sides, because you can do that one to one property, therefore now that's just going to be that's just going to come to negative t divided by 8,267. So I have ln of 1 over 10 equals a negative t divided by 8,267. Now remember we're trying to solve for t. Yes? Why, why can't you just get rid of the e? How are you going to get rid of it? I took the ln, yeah. <coughs> Logarithm. 3 raised to what power gives you 3? 1. 1. Let's put a 2 here. Three raised to what power gives you three squared? <coughs> three raised to what power equals three squared? Two. two. So guess what? This cancels off. E. E raised to what power equals e squared? Two. two. So when I take the ln, that's base e. E raised to what power gives you e to the that, right? Well, those just cancel out. So that's just going to be your final answer. That's going to be your answer right there. So that's what that property allows us to do. OK? Um, so now we have this point. So now we need to solve for t. So we can do that by multiplying both sides by negative 8,267. Therefore, t equals negative 8,267 times ln of 1 over 10. So now you take your handy dandy calculator. And we do ln of 10. Do not approximate it. Leave it in your calculator times negative 8,267. Huh? Ellen. Ellen. Oh, I did ln of 1 over 10. Sorry. I didn't write 10. ln, it's right under your log. It's ln of 1 divided by 10. Sorry, I said that wrong. I knew you couldn't have a negative answer. Times negative 8,267 is now going to give you t which is equal to and we'll just round this to the whole year so that's going to equal it was um, 
how I'll estimate the age of that fossil, it's 19,000 years old and 19,035 years old. Rounded, approximately. Yes? You need to do ln of 1 over 10. And you multiply by negative? ln. Yeah, use the parentheses. So that's it. Okay. Um, 